teasing you about that, and you got really upset about me teasing you about Fiend enunciation, phone. and it's what Fiend ended up phone. with your rap name, your new Fiend rap phone. name, DJ Library. Fiend that was phone. different. That, that was pronunciation. I, I was talking about Hello. pronunciation. Hello, now. Fiend. Who is this? Are y'all on the air yet? Yeah, who's this? Is this live? Yeah, who's this? Yeah, we're live. This is Eric. What could we do for you, Eric? Would you like to ask Jeff President Obama? No. What about Mitt Romney? No. Okay, fuck you, bye. Would you? Okay. He said, okay, <laughs> fuck you, bye. <laughs> well, you know, we've been doing this show for like eight months That's now. That's the and best nobody's, call Nobody's ever. ever called in. Like, you know, the, the, the picture we have for the... Uh, the picture we have on the on the fiend site is like someone screaming into a telephone, and I'm like, we never get calls like that. You know, we always get these people agreeing with us wow. and talking about how great liberty is. And yeah. that was our that guy actually called right before we came on. He said, "Is this the live number?" And I said, "Yeah." And he hung up. And, he, and I said, "That sounded kind of like well, well you, you said you said what do you want to talk about?" And he goes, "Nothing." Bye. And hung Click. up. I know. <laughs> and then I know. he called. Do you want to have sex with President Obama? Well, I mean, I guess that's a valid question. Um, because there are probably people out there who do want to have sex with President Obama. I don't know about Mitt Romney, though. Well, I, I doubt there's anybody out there who wants to have sex with Romney. Yeah, Scott Horton's new um new show from Thursday. Well, his show from Thursday talks about that. He talks about how Obama's going to win because nobody loves Romney. They'll vote for Romney because they hate Obama, but there are people who love Obama to the point where he's their religion to where Obama could eat their child in front of them and they'd still vote for him, literally. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to, like, cue up a clip for it, but that's sort of a Thursday show thing for us. Not really yeah. set up to do it here on the LRN that's, show. It's but such an yeah, amazing show, great. man. He basically it's, says... He, it, he's awesome. Yeah, he Scott says you love... You, there are yeah. people out there... Who, <laughs> who love yeah, he could eat a yeah. fetus yeah, on and national I, I, I tv would... and they'd still love him um there was you know right, right i listened to his show from thursday and the one where he interviewed the guy about uh how tv manipulate manipulates you but before that before that he talked an hour about the election and then i listened to ben yeah. Quake, ben stone's show uh back to back on lrn and they those guys are two of my favorite radio guys fiend phone <clears throat> fiend phone that's the same guy i'm hanging up on him in um no, so, no. Let's see what he has to say. Okay. Bean. F we'll, we'll give him. We'll give him one more chance. What can we do for after, you after third strike is out? You're on the air. Are you guy? No. Are we guy? Uh, yeah, I'm a guy. Are you a guy? I can't even suck my cock, bitch. All right. Hello. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. That that number is not getting on the air again. Wow. <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're gonna yeah. have to block you, Eric. Um. Thanks. Thanks for calling, though. Uh, that was <laughs> very pleasurable for me. Radio. I hope it good pleasured radio. you as well. Yeah. Yeah. He probably. Th <laughs> yeah. He probably thinks like oh, I'll times. get them in trouble on the radio with the government, but we're not. That oh, is that radio. it? I don't is know. I have it? no idea. So I, I bet he thinks he's like making us angry or something. But uh, that he, that doesn't kind of made our sweat day. off my brow. He kind of made our day, care. and he's not getting back yeah. in the air because you know <laughs> I'm trying to say stuff, and he's not getting it. You know, but uh, so so Scott and uh. And Ben are usually great, but they were just so beyond ben. better than they usually even are. I mean, they were just like, it was like the best two episodes I've ever heard to the point where um, I would say as soon as you're done listening to the show, you should go listen to both their shows for Thursday. I was going to say they're so good. You should stop listening to us immediately live and go listen to their archives. But you and DJ <laughs> both told me not to say that. But uh, I would say that. You could that just, good. I don't care. You just sort of said I it said, anyway. That's my way of um, doing it. You know. The, the, I think the show you're referring to is his is the Halloween show, the one that says you know ten thirty one two thousand twelve. That's the one where he basically says you know you liberals out there you love Barack Obama more than you love your own life. He could be like running a sword through your guts, and you'd be like, ah, oh, dear leader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he says yeah. it more eloquently than that. He really but, does. Uh, the gist is the same. Uh, but the the latest episode is is really great too. Um, not so much for what he says, but the interviews are really great. And the show after that, which is November second, um, he interviews a, a guy, an ex expatriate from Iran, about the whole Iran thing, and, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> uh, and he Iran also interviews thing. John Whitehead, the guy who was Brandon Rob Brendan Rob's lawyer, um, who's actually doing work to make model legislation that's like anti-drone and scott was like you know that's not going to do anything no no state's going to pass that man the, loving cops and officer safety is like the number one thing in all of american society and john whitehead's like yeah you're probably right i know and they it's just getting went off worse talking too. about I mean, how the world was getting worse yeah it was it's great. getting worse to where like 
I mean, there's a federal judge who just said it was okay for uh, cops to put cameras on someone's property without a warrant. I mean, it's Ugh. okay. We're not constitutionalists, but like you live in America, you're in the law system. You should follow it. And it's gotten to the point where like cops don't follow it. Prosecutors don't follow it. Federal judges don't follow it. The Supreme Court doesn't follow it. Congress doesn't follow it. And yeah. the president doesn't follow it. And it's like they don't have to. Uh, it's like what uh, Scott Beezer said, you know, a society will uh, a government will do whatever the society will tolerate. It's not about what's written down on some piece of paper or what's written in a law or a constitution. It's what people will let you get away with. And people just let them get away with it. It's like Scott said. They, they just start started putting red light cameras everywhere and cameras in every town in America. Nobody said anything. Was there even a referendum? Um, he says no, but actually there was. In Washington State, uh, one of the towns in the middle of the state. The people voted uh, actually against did, it, and they, and they did people it anyway. voted against it. And they yep, did it yep, anyway. They, they, yep. they, they said, well, you're not voting in your best interest, in the best interest of safety. So yeah. it, it's a null vote. <laughs> That's democracy. That's American-style democracy for you. If they want you like mama liberty said if they want it if they don't want civil distur civil disturbances they should stop disturbing us <laughs> and you know i was thinking the other day about like how bad people are and it's really it's like uh you know i kind of like what paul Bono says like rights or whatever you can fight to keep whatever you can keep and i, I was thinking mm -hmm. about like mm -hmm. you know in war throughout history like you know p conquering armies have always like raped the women tortured the men stolen everything and it's like i'm thinking about like what percentage of the human race would probably do that stuff if they could get away with it? And I think it's pretty high, like 10 or 20%. I really do. I really do. And a lot of those people are like adamantly involved in politics, adamant about voting. They, they try to get on juries. You know, they are the people who like would, would rape your mother or daughter mm. or wife and, you know, like let you bleed out while you watch it happen tied up if mm -hmm. they could. I really believe mm -hmm. that not a majority, but, a high and a striking minority of humans are like that i think it's some kind of 10, double 20%. digit minority yeah 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 you may be right but then again uh is that part of a product of growing up in a society it's where that. the state is it's your god that. you know and i would say like really the the honest people don't rape even if they can get away with it so like you know i wouldn't rape someone mm -hmm. if i could get away with it i wouldn't kill someone and torture them just to see them die so i yeah. think you know, the measure of an honest person is someone who wouldn't rape or kill or steal if they could get away with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like in, in Heinlein's book, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, harsh mistress you know, those people died. They got thrown out. They got evacuated, thrown in an airlock and, and just who did sent, sent to the winds. The people, people who were like yeah. that, that 10% to 20% of people who would rape a woman just to watch her scream. Those kind of people. How did they know? Last did they have society. a test? Did they have a written test? No, they they had juries. They would they would do an informal jury if somebody was caught doing this or a woman accused them. They would have a uh, an informal jury and they would have an informal judge too. They would just get them so it truly be of your peers. It wouldn't be like a change of venue like Rodney King kind of stuff. It would just be like whoever's on the street at the time yeah. and whoever's a respected individual in society that that is trustworthy and honest. You and, and is hanging around there or is in the immediate vicinity. You hey come over here, come judge this, and then you'd pay them a fee too. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think part of it too is is people can get away with it now, um, not just from the legal system, but also uh, if people are, are inclined to control people, to dominate people, they have avenues right now. They can be cops. They can join up the army. Then they can go kill and rape all the little brown people they want to. They can they can join the Congress and call the shots on those kinds of things. They can vote. I had an argument with a friend of mine last night who used to be an anarchist. And she lived with this band, Millions of Dead Cops, in San Francisco and worked for them. And she was telling me, why did you post this gun control, th this gun training video? I'm very into gun control. And, and I tried to explain to her that that just means she wants cops to put a gun to my head. And she couldn't really mm -hmm. get it. Right. She wants cops to control wanted, the guns. She wanted to disagree. That's, that's she she wanted to, to agree to disagree. She wanted to not fight. But, you know, I like... It's like you're pointing a gun at my face. It's, it's then, not an agree to disagree kind of thing. Yep. Yep. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. 
There's a robot girl and zany creatures Made with genetically engineered features And corporate villains crave the opportunity To steal a profit from my other's ingenuity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty Quantum Vibe what does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Okay, I'll record it. Yeah, go I, ahead. Scott Horton is heroic. I, I agree. And uh, thanks for not reminding me in five minutes about the show, Michael. Well, I know you were kidding, but it was kind of like I'm doing 50 things at once, and I'm like, really? You're telling me I have to remind you in five minutes? Come on, man. <laughs> no, I, I was just joking with you. Plus, it gives your post relevance if people comment on it. So. I guess. Okay. <laughs> and uh, But anyways. Um, I just, the thing the is, re- I'm incredibly busy. The five or ten minutes before a show. I mean, it's like it's like being air traffic controller. The stuff I have to do to That's get ready. Cool, man. I was just, I yeah. Was just, it just I it just felt crazy. like, you know, it felt like I was trying to get the 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 not above nine thousand score on the video game while my little brother was tapping me on the shoulder, going, "Hey, hey, hey, hey." <laughs> so what what else, man? The the reason I really called is to tell you and Nima and uh, Chris Black if he's listening. Uh, what a fantastic job you guys did on that song, man! That, oh, Rich Black, Rich Black. Yeah, sorry, I, I Andre. Just yeah, printed him on Facebook. Yeah, so. thanks, man. But that, it, yeah, I man, mean, we appreciate super that. Fantastic and uh, cool. Uh, two best lines from it would be the "I'd rather play life with my wife" <laughs> and to sum it up in a phrase, "motherfucking state." So I don't know who yeah. got get the credit for those two lines, but both of us, uh, you know, Nima, Nima did the first one. I like it. Life when and rappers, wife is mine. Andre was motherfuck the state. I like it when rappers talk about their wives. You know, when they use Why? the word wife too. I don't know. I've noticed that in rap sometimes, like Ice T does it, uh, because. People think like usually you rappers, don't think of rappers having yeah, wives. I think yeah. of them as like these total like rock and roll sluts, you know, fucking banging anything they can. But you know, just like well, there are also like, rappers that have wives, like Snoop Dogg, but never rap about them and only rap about all the bitches. They're fucking. <laughs> yeah, okay, right. And that's kind of right. like uh, really that, is that really what you're I doing? That was nice. Though. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, all we appreciate right, well, that. I'm gonna free it up and get off the line, but I just wanted to call and tell you guys, that you guys did a great job. Thanks, Colin Joe. Awesome, man. Thanks. All right. Bye. Peace. Here. That's nice. Yeah. All right. Did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom beans and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The Freedom Fiends have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. It's Yo. Freedom Fiends Live. Yeah. Uh, we've already had two callers. I guess if you were listening to the live feed, you probably didn't hear the last caller. You can go check that out on the archives. Uh, it's a good call, but uh, short, short and sweet, how we like them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. If you want to call in, you can dial 307 215 Five one seven one. In the meantime, I think Michael said he had some news to go through, huh? Yeah, a few real quick things. One is um, uh, we have a dance contest. You can win a copy of the Gun Training with the uh, Non-Aggression Principle ah, DVD. Go yes. to the Freedom Fiends blog, and it's the second or third post down. It's uh, You look at the video of the Obama st- feet stink, and you, you copy or interpret your own interpretation of Nima's, Nima doing the stink foot, stank foot dance. You, yeah. video, you videotape it, you put it on YouTube, and you give us a link, and uh, 
you can win. Which this the stank copy. foot, uh, you know, you watch it, but basically it's uh, hop on one foot, grab one foot with your arm, uh, plug your nose with your other free hand, uh, and stick, stick out your tongue, your tongue. Out and, yep. and bounce to the beat. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Hard to do, awkward, especially if you have a belly like me. Like <laughs> it was hard to keep my foot in the air, but you know, uh, it's you know, possible. You didn't see your belly in the video. I did some editing. Uh, oh, thank there you. Was, there was one scene <laughs> where you were kind of jumping up and down, and your shirt came up, and you could see your belly. And I moved, yeah. moved you down in the frame. <laughs> I appreciate. I help my friends that way, and then TV, TV it on, magic on the right? internet. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember when I used to interview people as a reporter, and they'd be like, uh, "Well, I'm kind of fat today. Can you Photoshop me li- lighter?" Like kind of as a joke but it's just funny like thinking you could photoshop people like that you know what's kind of funny that band millions of dead cops i was talking about um our neighbors in san francisco uh they were playing in berlin the same time bomb was playing in berlin and we had a night off and went to see them and Mm -hmm. uh their singer had put out a bunch of weight and had a belly big belly and was like you know playing with his shirt off which you really probably shouldn't do if you have a big belly so and playing this anarchist squat totally packed show uh and Dave, right before the show, the singer what, came up to me and Tony Fag, the drummer and bomb, and said, "Hey, here's our camera. Can you can you film our set?" And we're, we're I like, "Yeah, okay." And Tony, as soon as they hit the stage, Tony grabbed the camera from me, and he centered it on Dave's belly for the whole show. And then, <laughs> and at the end of it, hands it hands the camera back to Dave. Wow. And Dave's like, "Thanks, man." You know, and I'm sure when they got and saw it at some point. Wow. Yeah, that was Tony. That's well, that, the guy that, I don't talk why, to anymore. Yeah, that's why Tony Fack was a dick. <laughs> but he did shit that's funny. That's funny, man. I think that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. But I uh, guess. <laughs> so let's see. Um, more about the gun training DVD. There's a torrent of it now of the DVD ISO. You can go to the Freedom Fiends blog, and up in the top right is a link that says torrents. You can click on that, and you can get it, and you can see it. Yep. Yeah. Do um, that. Let's see. Gary Johnson is spamming me, and they're doing something really sleazy. They're spamming me. I've never signed up, never signed up for his newsletter. I'm getting his newsletter every couple days, and they change the email address each time, so I can't block it. Really? Yep. Why? Why? Because I mean, see, here's the thing. He doesn't it's not like in Gary Johnson has any chance of making a dent. So why why hurt? Why annoy people in the process? You're just yeah. ruining your brand. Although, I mean, his brand's already ruined in my mind. For yeah. any true libertarian, all you have to do is go listen to the uh, the Bob Wenzel interview of him lying like he knew who Ludwig von Mises was or Murray Rothbard was. Uh, yep. Screw that guy. I keep getting Romney spam. Um, you Republican. I don't know what it is. It's some grassroots action thing, and they preface it with like a little disclaimer saying, here at Grassroots Action, we don't endorse candidates, but we we make sure candidates can get their message out <laughs> to Tea Party activists like yourself. And I'm like, ugh. Uh, okay. I, I have not unsubscribed because I want to keep it there so I can keep tabs on what he's pitching to people and what these yeah. uh, douchebags are pitching to people. Speaking of politics, yesterday I was uh – I was looking out my window just watching squirrels and the neighbor kid across the street who um there's it's this family that's subletting the house they don't you know they're they've lived there about four months and they're probably gonna live there a few more months um the 17 year old kid in that family or 16 17 18 i don't know teenage late teenager um was up on a ladder doing something help you know putting away something on the side mm-hmm. of the house for winter yeah um and he was like on the second to the highest step like you know the top step it says never stand on he was at the one below that like teetering on the ladder and it was in the grass Mm. not on concrete Mm. or anything Mm -hmm. and uh i was a and and he almost fell off like it wiggled and he kind of caught himself and i was uh, putting on my shirt to run over there and say let me hold the ladder for you or at least teach him you need someone to hold the ladder you know because he would have fallen one way he would have fallen on the concrete and split his head open or broke his back so uh, I was about to do, you know, and he has a bunch of brothers and sisters. Some of them are old enough to hold a ladder. So I was going to go tell him, you know, he's fatherless. He doesn't know. No one's ever taught him you need someone to hold a ladder. So he was trying to be the man of the house. And I'm like, oh, let me go help the neighbor kid, you know. And I was putting on my coat to do that. And then he turned around on the ladder and he was wearing an Obama shirt. And I took my coat back <sighs> off and just let him. He didn't fall. But, you what? Know, Oh, that that's that's not. If cool, he had a, man. If he had a Pro- Romney, proper thing to do, would be if to he had a Romney shirt. Him. If he had a Romney shirt, I would have done the same thing. I was just I know, like, oh, you're a voter. But still, you're, you're proud a, of being. He's a, voter. a kid, though. How how old was he? Adult, you know, seventeen, uh, probably eighteen. That still though. I mean, when you're that age, I mean, I was a status when that when I was that age, weren't you? 
Yeah, you were okay. state. You were status. You were status two years ago. All right. Next time it happens, I'll help him. <laughs> help help him, and then and then because this is Teach sort of him. my philosophy yeah. is be very nice to statists and to socialists and people like that. Like there's a guy at uh, at work right now, and we were having a discussion about foreign policy. Like the the presidential debate about foreign policy had happened, and we were both like ripping on them, like how how ignorant both obama and romney were and this guy's uh going to university of texas he's getting um he's majoring in foreign policy or foreign policy studies or something like that and we were totally on the same page um and then i, I so it somehow it came out that i was an anarchist and it came out that he was a socialist and we sort of went back and forth on this like he was like but who would put out the fires and things like that and i was explaining it to him and then i had you know to go do work so i couldn't really finish the conversation um but i've made it a point to be very nice to him and be, be very nice to everybody uh anyway to set a good example i mean that's how you convince people All right, right. You lead by You're example right. You're right, and you no, know not, not the kid doesn't have a father. A Bomney shirt. I want him to fall <laughs> no over Bomney. and break his skull. <laughs> no, I just didn't want to go my, far out of my way to do it. And you know, a lot of people <laughs> okay. would think you're being nosy if you come over and say, "Let me tell you how to do your yard work." Seriously, so, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but 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 offering also, a hand. You know, I mean, he's some, sometimes o- that's nice. You know, like somebody he's opening the door for you. He's going to get Obamacare, and I'm going to be paying for his health insurance. <laughs> so I should want to help him. And you know, the kid doesn't have a father, so he wants. You know, he's black. He wants a father, so he looks at Obama, and Obama's like, "Okay, yeah, I'll be your father and do everything for yeah. you." That, you well, know. that that's a good point to bring up is yeah. is mm-hmm. the concept of the state trying to replace people's fathers. Uh, and yeah, and, and, and they be really, that parental I mean, they unit, say, that support system, replacing the family in general, the federal family. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, a couple more announcements. Let's see. There's a cool site called anarcho-radio.com, who is okay. now uh, it's another streaming feed, and they are playing some fiends, and they play a lot of cool punk rock. You should check them out. All right, sweet, sweet. And there's a movie you should right check now. out. There's a movie you should check out called The Mouse That Roared. It's a 1959 Peter Sellers movie about a country that's the smallest country in the world that like is 15 ah, square miles, and they yeah. they attack the United States and go to war with them and win. It's uh-huh, it's uh-huh. it's not it's not a freedom thing, but it's really funny. Some, well, some lib- some other liberty media people were talking about that. Was that you? Have you mentioned it before? If, if yeah, not, I, I talked think it about been, it, but I finally got okay. it. It's hard to get on Netflix. It's got a long queue, uh-huh. and they don't have many copies of it. Mm. So okay, okay. But uh, so speaking of Obama, uh, Yahoo had a an article called "What Do I Tell My Black Child If Obama Loses." Ah, I've got more about that though, because it's not it's not as bad yeah. as, as you you think. But we'll we'll go ahead and read some All of right. it and talk a little bit about it uh, coming up here after we sell some things. So was I judging a book by its uh, title? You were, but I that's okay. I we all do it all the I time. Really quickly <laughs> read it. Information overload, man. The internet. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. Streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. The Freedom Fiends Agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at nageradio.com. That's nageradio.com. The Freedom Fiends from freedomfiends.com. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! Brothers.com. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. So, Nima, we're going to call this What's episode. That? I want to call this episode uh, Good People Don't Rape, Kill, or Steal, Even If They Can Get Away With It. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, you're not much of a good person if you would do those things if you could get away with them, right? I mean, if the only thing keeping you from immoral acts is a gun to your head, 
uh, it's not real true morality. I mean, philosophers have explored that for centuries. That's that's old. That's not anything new. I mean, that's that's also kind of what the point of Clockwork Orange is about, right? I mean, in the end, the guy still wanted to uh, rape mall chicks and do all sorts of horrible <laughs> ultra violence. Um, it was but, only yeah. the drugs imposed on him by the state that made him sick whenever he had those thoughts that kept him from doing it and and the priest the catholic priest uh calls the state out on it and says that this is disgusting you know this this doesn't do any any good for anybody uh it's an abomination it's unnatural i liked um, how back in the 70s like when a movie had a moral point like that i love the way they made that with the priest and that today mm -hmm. that would be written so like weird and like oprah-esque in some way you know how do you mean? Like it'd be like some single mother explaining it to somebody? I don't know. It's just in the 70s, I really liked the moral questions in movies and the way they were presented and extrapolated. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I think that a lot of people who would rape, murder, or kill if they could get away with it don't even know they would and would be outraged that you'd suggest that. But, you know, I mean, what is it they say? Like three days without food to steal for most people and a week without everything to kill? That's that's a common mm -hmm. saying in, in prepperism, you know, Is it? like, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's I mean, I'm seeing it in New York. There's like people without power for three days and they're like, I don't, I, I don't see that they're killing yet because they those people don't go on camera. But there's people saying like after two days, I saw a lady on TV saying like people are defecating in the hallway of my apartment building because there's there's no run, running water. And I'm thinking like mm -hmm. preppers generally have a chemical toilet, you know, that's part of prepping. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's saying, like, the government has to come in and do something. The elected officials have to come in and do something. And I'm like, sheesh, man. If I was without water and electricity and power and internet for three days, I'd be bored and, like, <laughs> snacking on food. And, uh, you You'd know, be bored, but your wife wouldn't even notice because she she'd just be reads reading. anyway. Yeah. She reads actual paper yeah. books. As long as we had enough flashlights for her to read at night, she'd just sleep at night and read by the window in the day with an AK across her lap. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I I wouldn't rape, kill, or murder if I could get away with it. Never, I, it's not the state never. that keeps me from doing that. I also wouldn't steal. Um, there, are, there are often things happen to where I have the opportunity to take more money than than I feel than than I'm actually owed. Uh, just today at Walmart, a woman gave me my change, five dollars in cash, and then something else happened. She had to explain something to me. And then she opens the register out and hands me another five. And I was like, no, you already gave me my change. And she was like, are you sure? And I'm like, I checked my wallet. I'm like, yeah, it's right here. And she's like, oh, okay, thanks. You know, I don't want her to get in trouble. I don't want the store to lose $5 of wealth just because of my greed. Um, real morality comes internally. Otherwise, it's not real morality. It's just uh, slavery or force. Yeah. 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 So yeah. talk about voting, how that connects with voting. Um, well, I, I guess because voting, all you're, you're doing is you're delegating a, a right you don't have. You're delegating force. You're delegating um, the state to control people through force of arms, through laws, which are just enforced at the barrel of a gun. Uh, you're saying, hey, representative, go force these people to do what I want them to do. Uh, so in essence, what you're doing is you're perpetuating the system where we trust a select few uh, who are selected by you, the voter, uh, to lord over us and control us. Um, and as Ben Stone said when he quoted Tolkien, you know, the kind of people who want these things, the kind of people who seek to win the election, who seek your vote, uh, those kinds of people are the worst kind of people to give those powers to because they seek it. They want it. They want that power. They, they have the the... So what what kind of lust is it? The ruling lust. I, there's some word for it. I don't know what it is, but they desire it so much because they they want tyranny the boner. A tyranny boner. Tyranny boner. There we'll yeah. we'll fenify it. Yeah, <laughs> they, they have a boner for tyranny. Um, so you don't want those people calling the shots. In fact, in my opinion, you don't need anybody to call the shots but you and whoever yeah. you work with on on a specific project and then you can you can call the shots together because in those kinds of situations it's it's voluntary you can leave any time the state is not the state you pick somebody to call your shots and then if you're a voter and you're into democracy uh, if you don't like Fiend the shots phone. called the Fiend best thing phone. you can do is pick somebody else to call Fiend the shots phone Fiend phone hello we got a Fiend phone who's this hey gentlemen this is dave from ohio what's up dave i from believe ohio? nima 
Nima, the term you're looking for is a Latin term called libido dominandi. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Familiar? Thank you. Yeah, it does. That's <laughs> awesome. what I was re- reaching awesome. for, but it couldn't find it. sounds a lot it. sexier than it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I agree. All right. Well, well, what Thank are your thoughts you. on but, that? Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on that concept? Um, I mean, you obviously know the term. Is there anything else you'd like to add to to what that term means and why people should avoid people with that libido dominant was libido dominandus? Dominandus. Dominandi. Um, ah. That sounds like okay. the name of a Blue Oyster Cult song, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I want to say the term comes from Saint Augustine or somebody, you know, somebody like that. I mean, it's uh-huh. it's pretty old, and yeah. you know, Augustine. He was um, a pervert, man. Not not the. Yeah, that was, <laughs> you know, it's, no, you know no it's, choir boy. He. It's really funny because sex and love addicts anonymous the. The nickname that that group calls itself to not sound as shocking when they're discussing it in public is the Augustine Fellowship, named oh. after St. Augustine. Because St. Saint Augustine, as a youth, was a total whoremonger, and then he changed oh, yeah, he his ways. He and said, give me chastity and, and blah, 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 just not right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not quite yet. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> he had I a different kind of little, lust. You know, so, Dominandi and my libido or whatever. Right, <laughs> yeah. Did he have a power lust, yeah. or he was describing it in other people? He was describing it in other people, I believe. But I'm well. Then again, I you know I think he was I think he was pretty big in uh, you know in the church hierarchy. If I'm while you know, he was, if I've got while my, he was alive or after halfway straight while he was alive, I believe. Huh. I I, I can't swear that you know this is this is one of those things you know I I was a public school victim too and I should probably know about this more about this than I really do. <laughs> they don't teach him or, in public school. You know the fact that I know as no. much as I do means that they screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> no. Homeschooled they, like they didn't Flanders keep you in kids. The dark enough. Flanders yeah. kids could tell you all about Saint Augustine of Hippo. The Vulgate. <laughs> the Vulgate of Saint. There's there's a when when the when the when Bart goes to be babysat, when he gets taken away from his parents, Marge, uh, for a day, he's over being uh, like cared for by Flanders. And what they do for fun is they sit around and play a game called Bombardment. And Bart's like, cool. And he's like, of Bible questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> and one of them is like, you know, uh, what what is the true, the most accepted true version of the Bible? And one is like, I think, and the kids both know, and, G, and Bart answers like Jesus, <laughs> and <laughs> and the kids are like the Vulgate of Saint Hippo, the Vulgate of Saint, you know, like they know all about Augustine of Saint Hippo, Saint Hippo, oh, Saint Augustine of Hippo. Boy, how do we get out? We need uh, we need Randy to call in. Randy knows his stuff. I'll bet you. Randy's Catholic. Is Randy there? Well, Randy can't yeah, call in. I- yeah, I, I was too. I, that, you know, maybe that's where I where I got some. Of I was Episcopal, it. I, I which is like where you were Latin in high school. I was well, I so. was raised Episcopal and went to an Episcopal boarding school, which is basically like Catholicism with half the guilt, and you have to know how, about half the stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, it's like it's like Catholic light. Yeah, I like uh, I like the statue of Saint Augustine. He's always feeding birds. Really? That's yeah. not, I think that's Saint Anthony, isn't it? Ah. Uh. Isn't that Saint Anthony of Padua? I don't know, man. All he's right, got kind of that 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 monk that you know that that crazy. Um, he's bald, but he has that braid around his head. So, I think the topic was politics. Who are you voting for? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm voting for nobody this year. Cool. Yeah. Are you actually going to go in and do... vote for nobody, or are you just going to not vote like us? Oh, no, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait that kind of time. Exactly. I'm going to killed on my way to the poll. I don't want to be around those people. <laughs> I know. People are getting angry. Well, we're going into a break, man. Thanks for calling in, brother. Yeah, take care, man. Take care. Bye. Yeah, man. Thanks. Very active phone lines today. I like it. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Libido Dominandi. <laughs> We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard. So send us some money. 
Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. No okay. care. I'm talking to my friend Nima. If the world wants to listen in, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's what we're here for. So you can listen in. You can listen in on our private conversations. Yeah. Of libido dominandi. <laughs> you love the word. <laughs> I love that word, yeah. I love it when I learn a new word. I say it all the time. Like, my wife explained to me what an Adirondack chair was, and so now everything is an Adirondack what chair. What is that? I've seen that word. Is it? It's like, you see him on like, uh, you know resort locations on balconies and stuff like that it's kind of like it's got big arms and the arms are actually the legs at the same time and then like the butt dips down almost where it touches the ground and it's kind of laid back and loungy cool we decided not to talk about the what do i tell my black child if obama loses article on uh yeah yahoo although i said sheesh is this gonna be a tax finance pamphlet they hand out (laughs) at pta meetings but actually the author sort of goes off on how uh you tell them hey he lost. <laughs> you shouldn't. You shouldn't be telling your kids. You shouldn't be placing your kids' hopes on what one single man of their race does anyway. You really shouldn't. He, he basically makes the point of what were you telling your kids before Barack? They could do before Barack <laughs> Obama got elected. Like you can't do anything a black man hasn't done yet. I, Randall, I doubt people would tell their kids that. I like Randall Perry's answer. Randall Perry said, "You tell him that Obama being half black and fatherless is like Hitler being half Jewish and fatherless because he was." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Hitler was. And he said to the Jews, just like Barack is horrible to black people. Yeah, throws him in jail for weed four times more than George Bush did and blows yeah. him up by remote control. Yeah, well, those are brown people. I don't know. There's probably been some black people killed by a drone. I could see that happening. Or a bomb, you know, collateral damage in Libya. Oh, in when, Libya. When yeah. the black president bombed Africa, you people, that was just, you yeah. people out there that are you Obama people. humpers. You people. You people. Yeah, ghetto Seriously. boys, fuck a war. That's a great song, man. And that's he's Hell pitching yeah. about Bush, and it's Bush one. That's how it's old the that song first is. First Bush, man. yeah, yeah. I was actually I, I was doing a mix because usually my routine now is I go to work, I get home, it's like three in the morning, and um, because I'm using Serato now uh, and my Newmark NS7, I can actually DJ at night just in headphones. And even if I want to cue things, I can actually put my big headphones on top and then put a little earbud in my right ear so I can still cue things. And so I was jamming, and um, I have a ghetto boys greatest hit CD. Um, you know, and, and with Serato, pretty much anything on your computer, you can DJ, you know, it's a software that, that lets you control MP3s yeah. as vinyl. And I found the ghetto boys and, I, and there was a song called fuck a war and I played it and I was like, man, this is a great song. He's, he's literally like ripping on the silliness of going to war. And I think it starts off with like a recruiter calling him and, and like, uh, to well, tell him he's been t- drafted. Yeah. To yeah. tell him he's been drafted. And, and he's like, you know what? I don't give a fuck about anything you're saying. Click. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then they go off on um uh what is it what is the line um I don't want to get my leg blown off while Bush's old ass on TV playing golf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and and I'm thinking yeah yeah he's talking about Bush Senior. He's talking about HW. So so there's a long history, people, uh, of of rappers and 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 the counterculture hating warmongering presidents and wars in general so i don't understand how anybody in the counterculture or anybody who calls themselves young and hip can be on on obama's dick dick riding because he's the same he's just yeah. george hw bush times four that's all he is yeah he's a little he's black and he's like you know he talks a little more cool but and not really i mean people say he does but he kind of stutters a lot too i mean andre actually kind of imitated that in the like Debate. Uh, like, and- Andre's whoa, impression whoa, of Obama whoa, was whoa. way more on point yeah. than my Romney impression. And at first I was like, oh, he sounds like an old man who doesn't know how to talk. And then I listened to some Obama and I was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. how Obama really sounds, too. He does. He sounds like uh, an old black grandfather, you know, and, and yeah. like, yeah, like he doesn't when he stutter. tries to do it for effect, like he pauses like right. he's some kind whoa, of, uh, you know, preacher. Yeah. But but he's not passionate. You can tell he's just saying what he was told to say in the briefing that morning. I know. He's just repeating his talking points. Although he's smarter than uh, 
about Romney and uh, Scott Horton went into a lot of detail about that, but that's yeah, not an endorsement, yeah. as he said. And L- like you know, Romney in the foreign policy thing said said Syria is Iran's outlet to the ocean, <laughs> which is retarded. Because have you ever heard of the Persian Gulf, yeah. Romney? It's named after the country, yeah. the whole Gulf. You idiot. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, he's basically George Bush. He's a stupid, stupid man that's going to be manipulated by smarter men. And Obama is a really smart man who has surrounded himself with really smart, evil people. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. men and women. I was going to say men, but then I remember which, which I don't know which is worse <laughs> because that, that that almost makes it seem like Obama must be more evil or eviler well, than Skeletor, I mean, that's the choices, as, as LG would say. That's the choices we're given. You know, we really are in bizarre world. It's like okay, our choices are like. Do you want to be shot in the face or do you want to be shot in the back of the head? That's the voting choice. And uh, and then everyone's running around saying, and that's not a threat. That's I'm I'm speaking speciously and I'm speaking. Uh, I want to make that clear. Uh, I don't want to get Brendan robbed here. I'm just, I'm, you know, <laughs> the, the choice is getting kicked in the nuts or punched in the stomach, basically. And that's that's how it's always been. But it's more like that than ever. But and it's, it's, it's even closer than that. It's, it's the choice is getting kicked in the left testicle or getting kicked in right, the right testicle. Right. There you go. <laughs> Do you want a left boot on your testicle or a right boot on yeah. your testicle? Yeah. So, but the and then the other bizarre thing is that everybody on the left and everybody on the right is screaming that this is the most important election ever there've never been two candidates more diametrically opposed to each other and if you don't vote you're worse than hitler i mean that's basically what i'm getting from everybody you know mm-hmm. i really like scott horton's thing he he said he got really sick of arguing with liberals and conservatives individually on twitter and facebook and he said i'm so sick of it i'm just going to say all liberals suck and all conservatives suck it's a lot easier <laughs> i agree yeah yeah i agree too man all voters suck how's that if you so vote, speaking you of suck and the presidential thing isn't the only thing coming up i mean there's a bunch of bond issues there's a bunch of in my town there's a really funny really nasty radio ad right now of two guys who are running for uh state congress or whatever state congressman state rep um one of the guys running the other guy made a uh a slam ad that's on the radio that says like so and so uh says he's a good guy but did you know that so-and-so wants to perform invasive operations on pregnant women and he's a but he's against mandatory blood testing for drunk driving maybe that's because he's been convicted of two dt duis (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah and the man you know the invasive thing is he's one of those anti-abortion guys who thinks that anybody going for an abortion should have to get an ultrasound and look at it and see that there's a fetus before you know They're all ridiculous shit, man. I mean, (laughs) God told me to do that. God told me to show me, (laughs) show you your child and charge the taxpayer. Yeah, exactly. That's the point, right? And people vote for that. Like there, there's a whole contingent in Wyoming that will vote for that guy just because of that. And they're probably the Mm -hmm. same people who say, Hey, I'll vote for, he's had two DUIs. He he represents me more than the other guys. I've had three, you know, Yeah, yeah. (laughs) not to say that drunk driving laws are good, but. People can't grasp their idea, their head around the idea that just because you think something is right, um, th- and you know, try to persuade people to it. Wh- why does it? It's not right anymore if you get the government to force people to do that thing that you like, that thing you want people to do. It's not right anymore if you get the government to point a gun at somebody and say, "Hey, do this, or else I'll throw you in a cage, or else yeah. I'll steal a thousand dollars and call it a fine." That's yeah. not fine, man. That's that's lame. That's bullshit. Um, and the other thing is, they they don't show this this kind of gun at all, especially with like the bonds. We have one going on in Austin for a uh, med school, right? The the government wants to build a medical school, uh, an extension of the UT um, pre med program, I guess, and build a whole new giant building and a hospital. And all the ads are, um, you know. We need more doctors in our area. Why don't you vote for this and support a healthy Austin? Well, that's not what you're supporting, right? If you want more doctors in the area, uh, build your own hospital. Convince your own hospital to come. <laughs> if the market wants it, the market will get it. What you're doing, the what you're, what you're voting for, is you're voting for the government to steal money and then build a building and then say, hey, doctors, come here. It's you know, DJ, different than supporting doctors and hospitals. DJ has been getting up in people's face on the street about stuff. I'm really proud of her. It's like, I wouldn't awesome. do this stuff. Like I do it on the internet and then like I can block people, but she, uh, there was a guy putting up a big sign, like 15 foot long banner with poles on a public park, you know, on a, 
little strip in the middle of the road the other day uh, by the in back of the post office where you drive on that little abandoned road behind the post office. And um, she like she slowed down and looked at him and like rolled down her window. And what did you say, DJ? She said no, and then, <laughs> and then slowly drove away while mad dogging him. No, and we, and we went to Walmart yeah. yesterday, and she was wearing her T-shirt that has the Jefferson quote. I mean, it's Jefferson, but it's still for Wyoming. That's pretty libertarian, and you know we've had it for a while. It says a government that can give you every big enough to give you everything you want is big enough to take away everything take you it all have. Away. And mm-hmm. like two mm-hmm. ladies at the fashion counter working there, two of the middle-aged ladies like started talking to her and she had an animated conversation with them about it and they were agreeing with her. You know, they were like, yeah. who are you going to vote for? And she's like, there's no choice. I'm not going to vote. And they're like, yeah, yeah. you know, there's not. Nice. Cool. Nice. Know. See, that's real work. That's how you change That is. And it's more right? dangerous than yelling on the internet, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, more folks. Uh, we'll be back after we uh, pimp some more of our stuff. Worms. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. It's live. You already know what it is. I think I taped that whole break. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that. We didn't bash anybody. I think we just talked about how great the fucking ad is for um, Scott Beezer's. Beezer. Beezer, stuff. Like Beezer. And then I was yeah. singing along with it with reverb like There's a robot girl in zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. Yeah, features. it was cool. But it's weird because I there's delay on it because there's a delay from what when I hear you. I know, but so I don't I'm know off. If, I don't know which delay gets recorded. I, I don't know, well, it's man. always it off. It might be might be correct when it goes live, but when I sing along and go worms, worms, worms in beat to our outro music, uh, when I listen to the playback of it, it's off. Yeah, but it's an equal it's amount fault. off, so it's good. You you people try go go out you there people. try if you, if, if you think we're ridiculous. Uh, try to sing a song along with somebody on a cell phone. It's yeah. impossible. Yeah. You can't do it. You can't yeah. you can't stay in tune. Even if you do a round. So before we and, and I, I think the delay also doesn't it like <laughs> fluctuate? Yeah. You know, depending on, yeah, depending how, on how strong the, the signal is. Well, depending on how uh how much they need to compress for varying uh network conditions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. Uh, we're gonna talk about honeydew list, but I think I got it all in there. I think I said, you know, I mean like, you know, DJ comes home and I'm like Oh, I've, I cleaned up the whole backyard and raked up eight bags of leaves and, uh, you know, put in the storm windows and, uh, covered up the air conditioner. And she's like, wow, amazing. And it's like, I think a lot of husbands have to be told what to do and have a list for that shit, but I just do it. I'm like, I own this house with her. And it's like, you know, mm-hmm. she's too busy working nine to five to do it. I'm going to do yeah. it. Cause I'm, I'm, I love doing it. I get a boner from doing it, man. Mm, it's a good boner. From walking around with a gun in my pocket, <laughs> raking my leaves in the fall. In the I also autumn. think it's a function of age. The older you get, the more turned on you get by doing yard work. Well, Hank Hill, the only time he ever gets political <laughs> is when like the city council's messing with his ability to have the perfect yard. Or his toilet. Uh, his toilet, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, oh, but then there's the food wagon one where he's like selling trans fats on a food wagon with his boss after they've banned him. And he has a dream that like he's on a fighter plane with like George Washington and, and Abe Lincoln and like Landry, you know, the coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're like, they're being his mentor in his dream, telling him what to do. Mm-hmm. Although they're not being very much like what they were in the rebel, like Jeff, you know, I mean, Washington is saying things like you have to obey every law as written, Hank. That's what makes society strong. And I'm thinking like what the guy who risked treason and hanging by treason to like break all the laws. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then when he became yeah. the new king, broke a bunch of the new laws. Yeah, man. To uh, tyrannize people. Obviously. Obviously. And that upsets me too, with, with especially with pop culture. To me, that's yeah. one of the biggest things that is involved in getting people to do the horizontal enforcement, which is really the heavy lifting for the You're state. You're talking about the hagiography of the sainthood of the of the founding fathers that whitewashes yeah. over everything. Yeah, there's really that. And then for. also yeah. the, the whole, this is the greatest country in the world, yada, yada. There's, every country in the world station. believes that, man. Every country yeah, in the exactly. world. Every school kid. You can't all be right. In every country 
country in the world, throughout history, and before there was school, every child was taught from a very young age that his country was the greatest country in the world. There's actually a really funny kind of takeoff on that in that movie, The Mouse That Roared. And I guess this is a spoiler alert if anyone's actually going to watch that. I mean, it's Peter Sellers, 1959. It's pretty funny. Yeah, that's the guy who did Pink Panther. It's that kind of humor. You know, there's when they decide to go to war, they're trying to raise their army, and they don't really have an army. They have like basically they have an archery team and they can't even shoot straight with longbows and uh you know they're trying to say well we need you to go to war who will volunteer and nobody does and they're like well yeah. who believes that that whatever our country's called is the greatest country in the world and they all raise their hand and go yay you know and i'm like okay this country no one's ever heard of in the u.s state department can't find on a map after it declares war on the u.s mm -hmm. uh <laughs> believes it's the greatest country in the world you know Right, right. That's, that's just, and that's it. And and people need to get past that. And yeah. the hardest thing is it's so ingrained that it's yeah. everywhere. Like there's this station I listen to now when I'm working because I listen to the radio a lot. It's it's actually pretty good. It's it's a comedy station. It's called like 24/7 Comedy or Connie Comedy 102.7 or something like that. And they just play clips of stand-up comedians. Um, yeah. And even when they're ripping on the government, like there'll be ones from the Bush era that they're just ripping on Bush. Uh, they always have to preface it with, you know, I believe America is the greatest country in the world. Like, like, and like they it's, cheer like the, and people cheer. Ev everybody cheers automatically. It reminds me whether, of how Muslims, after they say Muhammad's name, they have to say like, oh, salam alaykum, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah they, they, it, it's like you have to do that. If you, if you say USA and you're in public, you have to say greatest country in <laughs> the world. You have to say God is great. The God of the country is right. great. Which yeah. just goes to show you it's nothing but this blind faith, this blind societal religion. Um, and, and at there, least you have a choice. You have a choice of what your religion is, at least. <laughs> well, not not even what your religion is, but what your what your, which church you go to, which faith you follow. Thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, a are Muslim. You, are you Episcopalian or or you know Protestant or whatever a Muslim or a Christian has the choice to not be in. You know, and Christians have to do rituals and things, but they have a choice not to do it. Muslims have a choice not to do it. Uh, citizens except, of the country. Except when the state's involved. Right. Because people say, well, Muslims are forced to do this. No, the not state. by Islam itself, right. but by the states that they live in, just like we are here. Yeah. And, and just because, uh, you know, the state has this quote unquote separation of church and state, uh, when you treat the state like it's your church, uh, it's kind of ah. pointless, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I don't have a honeydew list. I just do honey. <laughs> Back to that. Oh, yeah. That's what we were talking so about. So you were going to talk about bond issues, and we were wondering where the tax is coming from on this one. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Well, okay. So I'm looking through the PDF that the Austin City government gives you, and I'm guessing that this is one of those voter information packets, which I bet they send out to people who are registered to vote. At least and, Casper, and the they tell place. you. At least in Casper, they tell you how much it's going to be and what it's going to come out of. It's gonna They're going to raise the sales tax one cent. Your place, they don't even tell you. What does it say exactly? Ah, okay. Um, well, it's confusing because this this is the part that's highlighted, and it says ballot language. So I'm wondering if they, they have more than this a on the actual version ballot. A long version and a short version. Right. But the part that's highlighted, for instance, here's Proposition 14 in Austin, Texas, this election. Parks and Recreation, ballot language. The issuance of uh, 77,680,000 park and recreation improvement bonds and notes and the levy of a tax sufficient to pay for the bonds and notes. It doesn't um, say what the tax is or where it comes from. It doesn't in there, which is the highlighted part, which is why it's confusing. Then it goes on to say, if approved, this proposition would allow the city to provide funding for designing, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then it says no increase in this year's property tax rate is anticipated as a result of passage of this anticipated. proposition. So, they, they, yes, it's not very clear language. It's vague. They basically – and that's the thing. The part that's highlighted says a tax sufficient to pay for the bonds and notes. And it looks like all of them, which there's That could multiple. be anything. It could be we need to come into everyone's home and count their bullets and charge them $5 <laughs> For every bullet they have yeah yeah um and that's the other thing is you know it's kind of like when you go to the grocery store right and you feel like oh well, i'm buying cheap stuff you know i'm buying ramen and a bunch of things that cost a dollar and then you get you, you go check out it's like you know 40 50 bucks you're like whoa i didn't expect to spend that much um you know these things for you spend. E either one of them taken alone it's still <laughs> a lot of money but i guess not a lot of money for a city but 77 million dollars that's a lot of money and each one is like that and e and so what they do is they take the taxes they all throw them in some other thing and then they decide when they're going to tax you so in the end it ends up being a lot and it's unseen you know it's not readily apparent unless you literally go to the city council meetings all the time or literally watch the news that talks about the city council meetings which, who the hell does that nobody except for have, people over the age do you have of like, 60 do you have the local c-span there we do 
I'm sure we do, but I mean, <laughs> who watches? Nobody that? who has a life watches that, do they? That's for like no. shut-ins and invalids <laughs> and old, old people, people who that vote. don't have jobs. Old people who vote and say, yeah. "I'd like my great grandchildren Ex- to have a new exactly. library." That's another good point. There's a lot of self-selection bias in the way politics and voting works too. But we'll we'll talk more about that when we come. Back. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Oh, I don't know, man. If it yo. comes organically, we'll let it come. Yo. We're here. Nima doesn't Live. realize we're back in the air. No, I did. I was okay. listening to it. But you don't care because you're just talking organically. to your friend Michael. You're just talking to your friend Michael. That's it. You don't, yeah. you don't care if there's people listening. I do. Yeah. I do. In fact, oh, I, care I care so much that I want you to call in if you're listening and you want to steer the conversation in any one direction. You uh, people. We'll hear you out. Call you can in. make a pitch. You people. It's a. It's 307 215 5171. Again, that number in a sexier voice 307 215 5171. That was actually creepy. I don't think that was sexy. But uh, no, I like you get it. the point. I like Call it. it. Call it. If, did I tell, if you want. I did care. I tell you I listened to our new song, Obama's Feet Stink, on a loop on my iPod for eight hours the other day while doing yard work? <laughs> That's I'm not funny. kidding. See, I mean, the it's way like, I feel about it is I don't have to do that because I listened to it eight hours while I was mixing it. Yeah. <laughs> but then, and I did listen to it for like 20 hours while I was editing the video. But um, yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably eight hours altogether. I'm going to I'm gonna throw it on. My smartphone, and I, I haven't listened to the finished mix in my car, which yeah. is usually not something I do. Usually, I uh, that's one of the well, you know, Les I Paul to used to mix in, in his car. car. Les Paul used to mix in his car. He used to, you know, now, now yeah, in I studios, could. in good studios, they always have three sets of speakers. They have the giganto best speakers in the world one that you know shake the room and sound like you're in a stadium. They have like mid-sized ones that are comparable to a good home stereo and then they have like a boombox. And that's what yeah. they mix to sound good on all three, but Les Paul invented that. He would drive his car up next to the station and or the recording studio and run wires out the window and hook it up to his car speakers and sit in his car and listen to playback. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, I could I could do that too. I just uh, bring my laptop yeah. in my car and plug it into the aux uh, input. And, you know, I, I'm probably going to start doing that again. I used to do that. That that used to be like my number one thing is I have to listen to it in the car before I publish it. But well, um, the reason I've got good reason, headphones, and so I don't really do it now. And you know, the reason that I do that, and I wanted, and why I brought it up is because that's how people. Hear don't tell me oh, what I you think. Mean the re- the, you mean the reason that you listen to the song for eight I got hours. something deep to say. Yeah, the reason right. I do it. Okay. Say it. The reason I do that is because I make the art that doesn't exist in the world that I want to consume. Like, literally, if somebody else did everything I'm doing, I'd, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I'd be doing what Sean Diwali's doing. I'd be like, how can I help you guys? You know, And then I'd do what he's doing, yeah. which is learn from the school of the fiends, and then he's going to go off in a year <laughs> and, uh, you know, be be the campaign manager for uh uh not for politicians he's gonna i think he's gonna go be a pr guy for uh professional wrestlers pr professional wrestlers so <laughs> but um you know then we'll find someone else to do it but you know literally fiend like, phone fiend phone it's him called yell at me probably fiend phone yeah. is michael who's this this is uh jeremy from ohio how are you hey good what's, what's up? up you're on the air I figured as much. My my feed must be behind because I didn't even hear it ring. It's thirty seconds behind, six fifteen to thirty seconds behind, depending on your internet connection. That's how it keeps with it keeps from dropping. Oh okay, yeah, I just it buffers on my phone. What's up, man? Jeremy from Ohio. Nothing. I just called in to complain about the status people because we were getting so close to the election that they're driving me insane. Go for it, man. <sighs> I Tell bet, us, man. you got some yeah, stories. You got some insane. stories. 
Of course I do. Go uh, ahead. Go ahead. I, I, there's one girl on Facebook. She's a, um, a guy that I work with's wife, and she's really stupid, and she's a <laughs> huge Romney <laughs> supporter, and she has no idea why she likes him other than he's a Republican. So I was to the point where I was going to get defriended by her from just bugging her. Good. Every little post mm-hmm. she was making comments. So I backed off a little bit. And then um, one of my buddies at work, uh, I went to, I don't know, I was at the office on Friday, and they grabbed my iPad and posted on Facebook, I've reconsidered, I'm voting for Romney. He's a very handsome oh, man to mine. What? And then everybody knew, because all I do is, <laughs> you know, hate on Obama and Romney. So, so they got all kinds of attention. Everybody was all over. It. And then she posted, that's the most intelligent thing you've ever said. So then later wow. that day, she's I like said, fraudulent, I, man. I, I, I said, I said, explain to me why you want Romney to be the president. Say nothing negative about Obama. Why, why Romney should be president without using talking points, Republic GOP without talking points. And she immediately posted to, like little uh, GOP made things about taxes. And I said, no, you need to tell me why you want him without talking points. And then, uh, <laughs> were they like said, copied and pasted from the GOP <laughs> Romney site? It's exactly what they were. And then, uh, we made fun of her because my other buddy got in and, uh, <laughs> He likes Gary Johnson. He's just not he's not there yet, but he's getting there. I'll tell you, man, if somebody got on my property on my computer, this is your iPad, not your work's iPad, right? It's your own private iPad. Yeah, this is my iPad. I'd fucking punch somebody, man. I'd end up in jail. <laughs> if someone did that to me, uh, you don't touch my yeah, computer. It, it's like touching it, my wife, man. You don't fuck with my shit. Basically, <laughs> it happens. And you know, and and I think that anybody that commits fraud like that, I mean, I think that's, I think in lip air, that would be still be a really serious crime. Like being, being, you know, <laughs> assuming the identity of someone else and uh, making them look, well, I don't know. There's also, there's also the issue of it being obviously not true. Okay. I it's mean, free speech too, but it, he's it's saying it's people obviously it knew it wasn't his, him saying that. I have a real I was, issue. I have a real issue with the, she grabbed his property to do it with. Oh, no, it wasn't no, no. her. It was I, somebody I, else. I'm okay with it from the standpoint of it. It started a hugely successful thread. Okay. That uh, that then you know people were responding to. So that did okay. you convert anybody? Did you convert anybody that was sort of on their way there yet? Not really. Uh, um, keep trying, man. Keep trying. Hard. People are very. Uh, my my eight year old. I had to help her study for her government. <laughs> oh no! Social studies test. Ugh. My wife was scared to have me help. Your how to be a good <laughs> voter <laughs> test. How to be a good so citizen. She put, yeah, she put uh, there. She made her flashcards, and one of them was taxes, and it's money given to the government to provide. <laughs> and I said, correction. I said you can put that down on the test because that's what they want you to say. But the the correct definition would be money stolen from the mm-hmm. government to provide mm-hmm. inferior services. Stolen by the government. <laughs> yeah. Inferior there services. Go. There you go. And she was like, "What do you yeah. mean?" And I said. Well, because I've heard kind of heard Larkin Rose make this comparison. I said, well, what if I just took 10 bucks from you? And I said, you wouldn't like that, would you? And she was like, no, I wouldn't at all. And I said, well, what if I said, well, I'm just going to go get you lunch? She says, oh, okay, that wouldn't be so bad. I said, and then I came back with a stale bologna sandwich with nothing on it. And I said, why provide you <laughs> service? And she was like, oh, yeah. I don't think I'd like that. And I said, that's the government. That's the Ron that's Swanson the argument. Right. You just the Ron eat- Swanson eating yeah. the sandwich thing. Yeah. yeah. You ever seen that? No, well, I probably. I don't remember. It's but on, I got a kick out of him the other week. Parks and Recreation. There's one where, you know, he's working in the government office, and it's like ten year old girl comes in and says, "I'm supposed to interview a government worker for my <laughs> class," and she sits down and says, and he says, um, "Can you tell me about?" At first, he's like, he wants to get rid of her because he doesn't want to talk to anybody or do his job at all. But finally, she's like, "Well." Can you tell me about the government? And his eyes kind of perk up, and he's like, <laughs> "Yes, I can." And he sits down. He opens up her lunchbox. He eats a third of everything in her lunchbox and puts it back in, and says, "That's what the government does." Any questions? <laughs> I love Ron. And then, Tom. and then she uh, she writes a report. Oh, he also gives her a Claymore landmine to protect yes. her property. And she, her, the girl's mother comes storming in a few days later and says, did you give my daughter a landmine? And he's like, well, it seemed to make sense at the time. And this, <laughs> re- and this report she wrote, why the government matters, she wrote, it doesn't. She failed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so he ends up, the girl, the girl, little girl ends up writing another essay that's what the teacher wants to hear and gets an A or a B and then comes back to visit Ron and, 
he, he she shows him the the thing where she got the f for saying the government doesn't matter and he says may i have this and he said yes and when she finally leaves he he literally like looks like he has a tear in his eye and he <laughs> and he looks and he he holds it up on the wall like he's gonna frame it like okay it's gonna go right here <laughs> ron swanson's awesome he is he's the best i told my boss about the one a couple weeks ago where that his girlfriend came by and she was like am i interrupting anything important and he was like impossible i work for the government <laughs> <laughs> That one's been floating around as a meme, too. Yeah. But, yeah, I had my buddy call me, too. He's super Republican. I haven't talked to him in, like, a month. And I try to avoid the whole – because mm-hmm. it's like talking to the wall with him. And uh, he was like, so are you voting next week? And I said, no, I'm going to I'm gonna sit this out, you know. And he was like – well, then he started, well, that's a vote for Obama. And I said, so you're assuming uh, I'd vote. I said, you're assuming I'd vote for Romney because that would never happen. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> um, well, no. And then finally he got to the point where he was saying – just go. Just write in Ron Paul. Vote for Gary Johnson. It's Dude, that important. That's funny. It's like it's that important to go right. It's Obama's gonna was. win. Obama's gonna win. Obama's gonna win. I'm gonna say it right now. Obama's you gonna win. So? Yeah. So hang I on. Did, did your world okay. Hang on. We're uh, Paul didn't hang on. win. Oh, listen Don't to this. Keep hoping for some great man <laughs> to fix government through government. Can you hear it? Complete your evolution yeah, today to full on anarcho capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom beans and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians <laughs> argue, but who would build the roads? The freedom beans have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. What did you guys put that one out? About a week ago? Yeah, we're putting it out before the election, a couple days ago. So yeah, I think it was a few days ago. We're on a break right now, but we're still recording for the archive if you want to keep talking until we got to come yeah, that, back. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So do you, do you feel like... See, I block friends like that. I I am not friends with people. First of all, they usually block me first. But <laughs> the ones who don't, like you know, this this girl that's like totally into gun control was bitching me yesterday about how we need to prevent things like what happened in Denver. And I'm like, so you're into gun control? So you mean you want cops to put a gun to my head and steal my private property that will never be used for anything except peaceful uses or self defense against a violent person? Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, but. I don't know. That's no, you're being antagonistic. I just want more <laughs> laws. And I'm like, that's what laws do. And then I was like, yeah, you used to be an anarchist. You used to live with a band called millions of dead cops and do their merchandise at their show. You know, how can you, how, what happened to you? You used to be cool. And if you say I grew up, I'm going to unfriend you. And then, yeah. she, and then she's got into this whole, like, well, let's just agree to disagree. And I'm like, no, because it's not just words. It's actions. You want to vote or, lobby to have people come at me with a gun and steal my private property and like she Mm -hmm. didn't get it she thought i was being an asshole she's like i like you i want to be your friend i don't want to argue let's talk about literature or something and i'm like okay and i thought i took nima's advice you know normally i would have blocked her by now or like blocked her and then posted screenshots of her as a blog post or something with her last name scratched out but i took nima's advice and i didn't dump her completely so i can maybe educate her but literally this chick used to live with a band called millions of dead cops and be their merchandise girl and i'm like dude what happened to you you know yeah well yeah. That, the reason i give that advice is um these people they might not get it now they might not ever get it but i've had conversations with people where i take a hard line on something like there was some guy that was saying you know you need to be licensed to have babies you know that that sort of liberal uh, population control kind of meme and i explained to him how that's just a basic animal right like every animal that that's part of one of the functions of life is reproducing that's how we define life if you take that away from people or put that in the hands of other people you're you're being immoral and ridiculous and he he argued Mm -hmm. it night and day with me uh, and then a week later um, you know we were talking he's like oh yeah I, I agree with you now I thought about it and it just clicked yeah some you know, people it I will click later the thing that I really need to remember Nima is like I need to apply the Alcoholics Anonymous thing to it because in AA I've talked about how like I would sponsor the unsponsorable guys, the guys that kept relapsing. They'd been fired yeah. by their sponsors, fired by five sponsors and I would sponsor them and they'd relapse and they'd quit calling me and like Three years later, they'd find me on the internet and email me when I lived in a different city and be like, you know, I finally got it and I'm sober and I have you to thank. You were the one guy that would put up, that, you know, didn't put up with me, but you sat and worked with me when nobody else would. Right. So I need, yeah, I mean, stuff I can stick in people's brain, even abuse. if you have a 0.001% success rate. 
That's you know, I won't, I won't take it's abuse a, from somebody. Like, but this chick wasn't being abusive. She was just being ignorant. You know, yeah. if someone says like, yeah. "You're a fucking horrible person because you don't want to vote for for Obama," and I hope you die in hell, and then wants to keep talking to me, or like the guy who, the union member who said he was going to hunt me down and cut off my head and shit down my neck because I was pro Ron Paul, or I liked Ron Paul better than Obama. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those people I'll block. But this chick wasn't being abusive. She was just being ignorant. So with people that are not abusive and just ignorant, I should keep them around a little more. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I tend to think that they'll come around. Like, uh, because, I don't know, I'm of the thinking that the whole thing can't last forever anyway. It's uh, not yeah. sustainable. So, and when you make moral... I think we're back. Morally, Hang on a sec. Oh, okay. Yeah, we are back. And we're still okay. talking. Keep talking, man. Let's, uh, let's have right. you talk as long as you want. So I think um, if you make a morally consistent and sound argument, if somebody even – most people don't, but if they do take the time to think about what you said, then they have to eventually come around. At least that's the hope. Yeah. So. Well, I think I think you're right, and I don't think there's a, a hundred percent or even maybe a majority percent that that maybe will. But you're right. The thing is inconsistent. The state does collapse eventually, whether or not that happens in our, our lifetimes, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if we've made the argument, and if that's still in somebody's head, then when when the world does start to collapse, they'll go, huh. Maybe these, maybe that person I listened to was right. Maybe the state is unsustainable. Maybe the and, state is immoral. And during the break, I was using the analogy of AA, and like AA, you don't have a high success rate for the first time. Everybody walks in the door. I mean, I'd say like sixty or seventy percent of them go out and drink again. But uh, you know, I was talking about how I would sponsor the unsponsorable. And three or four years later, after they fired me because they wanted to go drink, you know, they'd write me and be like, you were the only guy that took time with me. So basically, if someone's not abusive, if they're just ignorant, I'll, I should work with them. And another another corollary, I think, would be like religious proselytizing. I hate to say it, but, you know, yeah. I mean, the reason people go and do ministries in other countries, except for the, you know, back, back, except for the ones that go and kill everybody in the, you know, the ones that actually <laughs> just go to do good, like they join the whatever and mm -hmm. go over there and dig wells and read the Bible, teach and read and give them Bibles. Um, that That's from a quote in the Bible, something about like it's it's the duty of every Christian to present the word to every living man and woman on earth. And, and, then, and then if the people refuse God, then when they go to heaven, they can be cast into hell if they haven't accepted it. And it's yeah, kind of, at least we, they had a chance. They yeah, weren't ignorant. Yeah. And we thing. joke about that too. We say, we're going to tell everyone we can. And then, you know, when we're libertarian emperor, emperor of the world, <laughs> you say we're going to, we're going to put, I'm going to put them in libertarian reindoctrination camps. <laughs> uh -huh. And, uh, you know, so Sean Diwali was looking at our stats. He's doing the streaming server uploading now. And he's like, God, someone's been listening for two days. What is that? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, maybe it's a libertarian reindoctrination camp. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been outsourced, yeah. It's a privately owned <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, but, but, my but that, that's like, a good that's a good analogy too, because I've never encountered a missionary. You know, I usually invite him in, or at least I used to in the past, and you know, offer them a drink uh, and sit down and chat with them. I've never met one that was that was judgmental about you in that moment. I've I've never met them. You know, we'll have a, a discussion or even a debate, but I've never had them say, "Well, you're going to hell." And, you know what you and, could do. You know, what, you know what you could do if you had a lot of time on your hands. And maybe record it. You could say, I'll let you in and you can talk to me about God for 10 minutes. If, if I, I can, can talk, talk to you about, about liberty for 10 uh -huh. minutes yeah. and we'll videotape it and put it on YouTube. I tried nice. that. that. Not that, the recording part, but yeah. I did that like four months ago. Some guy going, oh, door did to door. you? How did, what'd, yeah. you, what'd you say and what'd he say? Well, he basically was asking me if I was Christian. And I said, I'm not. As my wife is, but I'm not. It's not into it. And, uh, you know, I said, I d and he was like, well, you don't believe in God? I said, no, I'm not an atheist. And I tried to build a common ground. I said, I think they're just as stupid as, well, not as stupid. I said, they've got no room telling people that they, that most atheists are angry because Christians are telling them that they know the way, you know, yeah. that I'm aware of. But when you're an atheist, you're kind of saying, in my point of view, is you're, you're saying that you know the way, that there is no God, and nobody knows. Yeah, a lot of atheists are really yeah. angry and really religious about it and, like, need to tell yeah. everyone about it. Although, yeah. I think it's kind of like liberty. If you're absolutely sure something's right, and I'm a deist, which means, like, I think there's probably some kind of superior, you know, some kind of being that created everything, but I don't think that it needs me to reassure it constantly, and I don't think it reaches <laughs> yeah. down and rearranges yeah. the train schedules or hurricanes. Um, you know, it really, it's, it's not that important part of my life. And I really, mm -hmm. that's what I've come to after 48 years and I'm not going to change. So, 
Yeah, uh, kind of where you are. You know, and I point. think <laughs> there was actually a band, this really band I really like called 9353 in DC who had a record. Their record was called We Are Absolutely Sure There Is No God. And I thought that was a really mm. funny name because it's like, how can you be absolutely sure there's no God? You know, but that's what well, they call it. well there's that episode of The Simpsons where Homer like stays up all night and, and has a proof and he gives it to Flanders in the morning. Oh, and I proved there's no God and hands him a And then Flanders paper. burns <laughs> it because it's correctly. Questions. Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to come up with a flat tax proposal, but I accidentally proved there's no God and Homer <laughs> Flanders looks at it. It's one page and he reads it. He's like, mm, no wait, there must be a mistake. No, didn't he carried the one? Okay. Okay, and nope, it's airtight, and then he just starts like burning it with his lighter <laughs> while Homer's like putting copies of it under people's windshield wiper down the street. <laughs> oh, I but, uh, how, how did I how did the thing. how did the missionary react when you well, uh, pitched liberty to him? He was shocked that well, I didn't even go that far, but okay. I, I I basically because of the story of because I'll go to church with my wife, but the story of Passover really bothered me. Uh, it it's sacrificing time. children, isn't it? Yeah, and so I brought that up to him, and I said, that's not moral behavior. And his argument was, well, he warned them. And I said, so murdering people if you warn them is moral? And he was like, well, I mean, it was God. And I was like, okay, I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. I was very civil. And then uh, and I said, so if President Obama said, put your American flags out, and if you don't have your American flag out, he's going to drone strike bomb your house. Is that moral? He's like, but that's God, and he's just the president. Yeah, like, that's not what a lot of people kind of think. The same thing. Yeah. So then, I, at the end of it, because we were getting nowhere, uh, at the end of it, um, I basically started to bring up the wars and how. Because I was, my point is, I get very angry with people that, because I'm pro-life, and but I'm fully pro-life. <laughs> pro-life meaning should, meaning about abortion or about war? Well, I, I don't both. And, but that's because that's pro-life. If you're just pro-life about abortion and not about the wars, you're not pro-life. Ah, good point. And mm-hmm. um, yeah. I, I also want to rebrand pro-choice as pro-death because I say I, just call it what it is. And um, But my thing with pro-life is you shouldn't make it illegal, abortion's illegal, because it just creates a black market. So just you yeah. know, teach people morality, let them make their own decisions, and you know, they got to live with those decisions. So I just started to talk about the wars, and he kind of freaked out. And ran yeah, out. I disagree about uh, abortion being wrong, but I really like what you're doing with talking to Christians about if you're going to be anti-abortion, you should be anti-war. Because in my state, there are so many voters who like the two things that will get somebody elected in the state is uh, being anti-abortion and pro-military, which is really a weird. Here. It's so gross. Yeah, I went to a yes. little kid's birthday party. I took one of my other kids to a birthday party, and the little kid's birthday cake was. And this is me overthinking things. Maybe I don't think it is, but some people would say. And he's got like his birthday cake's army, and it's got tanks and soldiers with guns on it. And I'm like, your birthday cake is death machines and people shooting <laughs> and killing each other. I was like, it's so disturbing. It it is. Are you a gun? for a kid? A are little a kid? Are you a gun guy? Do you own guns? I have one. Cool. Yeah, I got one last year because cool. I. Got weirded out because of this, the Fast and Furious thing. And, I was and, like, well, and see, people, there's people that think all guns are death machines. I see what you're saying about military stuff being death machines. No, I, but like, yeah, we, I love guns. Like this chick I was arguing with, you know, that I was talking about was telling me that like, oh, I'm not into guns. I'm anti-violence. And I'm like, that's, that's a, that doesn't make sense. Stupid. Man. It's a non yeah. You have to defend yeah. yourself. You have to have the ability to yep. defend yourself. That's all it is, you know? Exactly. But no, I, but you know what? My point was the pro-life thing it, it's hard with some christians because this lady at work i brought that up to her because she was talking about voting or the are you gonna watch the debate and she knows where i stand i'm like no nah, probably not it's a waste of time and then i i figured i might make a point with her because she's very christian so i said you know i went down that track and she said well do you, what about israel have you read do you read the bible i said no i don't read the bible but i respect that you do and that's great and you should be able to and she said well, Israel, you know, then she got freaked out about Israel, and I'm like, oh, what's with these people in Israel? You know, it's That's, funny. I, Christians like that, like Joe Lunchpail in America. They want the Armageddon to happen. Yeah, man. Like Joe <laughs> and Lunchpail then, and then in they America. Want to either, they want Jews to either convert or the Jews will die. So Israel yeah. shouldn't be so cozy with this. Well, so what I'm, you I'm, should ask the Christians about who are pro-war but anti-abortion is – uh, think about when they do a drone strike and wipe out a wedding party. There's probably pregnant women in that wedding party, and you just aborted <laughs> their kid. You know. Oh, but those are scary brown people that are probably terrorist fetuses. <laughs> so that doesn't matter. But no, I'm trying to put like some something together to make people think terrorist about fetuses. This whole, uh, <laughs> the, like the Iran situation, and I don't know. You can give me your opinion on whether you think it has hold any weight. Is 
because everybody, you know, the the war drums are beating and they're saying we have to invade because they're going to get this nuclear weapon and they're going to, they make it sound like we will immediately well, Nima, launch it. Well, Nima, your, your dad's from Iran, so you have relatives who are going to get bombed if they bomb that place, so you take that it's one. Ridiculous. Well, I, I yeah, want to so, hear, hear the rest of the question. We got like 30 okay. seconds, man. We're getting oh, kicked this, off the air here. Like, will two minutes, not work but, in but, 30 seconds. Um, so basically, in a short form, is you have to put it in normal terms. So let's say there's a guy in Hawaii that says he just can't get a gun. But if he gets a gun, he's going to come to your house and shoot you in the head. But he's in Hawaii, and you live in Ohio. It's really far well, away. Well, this chick's in Oakland that is gun control nutty. And, like, first of all, how's, guns are already very illegal to carry in Oakland, but there's everyone gets <laughs> shot all the time there. And it's like, I live in Wyoming, and I'm never going to set foot in California again. And I told her that. And it's like, why do you want to take away my guns, man? I ain't going to hurt you. Yeah. Well, back, right, back so, to the Ohio. If, if you use the done, Ohio we're metaphor. Done, we're done. We're done. Right, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We'll talk about it in the next cast. I'll, I'll answer yeah, the question. Call back next, next week, man. Will do. All right. Have a good one. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. This has been the Freedom Fiends. Worms. <laughs>